Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time clicking on one of my videos. Either way, I'm so happy that you're here and I hope that you gain lots of motivation from this video. Um, while I'm recording this right now, it's a Friday morning in November. It's super rainy outside. It's going to, the temperature is about to drop here in Northeast Ohio and I think tomorrow there's a prediction of snow. It has increased from 30% chance to a 50% chance. So honestly, I'm kind of here for it. I know that that sounds crazy, but after living in Florida for almost three years, I am welcoming the like winter weather and just the snow vibes, but I'm sure that in a couple months I will be 100% over it. Um, <laughs> But for today, I'm kind of excited about the idea of maybe having some snow tomorrow on Saturday. So um, we are starting off on this video in the laundry room as we normally do. And I was just getting a load of laundry moved over. This was um, in the morning. And I typically uh, throw in a load of laundry every morning, like first thing, usually about 5.30 in the morning, I just throw a load of laundry in. And... Um, then I can move it over usually after I get back from taking the girls to school. So this project here that I'm start starting is um, cleaning this couch. We have gone back and forth with our furniture in this house. If any of you guys have moved, um, you know, like sometimes your furniture from your previous home doesn't necessarily work. I found an orange in the crack of the couch, which is really gross. Um, but some of the furniture doesn't necessarily work in the new space. And so it's sort of been like trial and error since we've moved in six months ago. Um, definitely needed to purchase some furniture because our home in Florida was much smaller than the house that we have here in Ohio. So that was the first order of business. And then we've kind of like moved things around a few times just to try to best fit the space that we have. So this couch had been moved a few times and had been like eaten on a few times. <laughs> and obviously there are like some crumbs underneath the cushions. There's a French fry. Like, I don't even know how this happens because we don't eat on it very much, but it is what it is. So I grabbed the vacuum and started cleaning um, just all these crumbs up. And then I wanted to get out my um, carpet cleaner, which I will link my carpet cleaner um, in the description box. I absolutely love it. It is not the cheapest and it's not the most expensive. It's kind of a middle of the road one, but I feel like it does such a good job. I will say we don't have any pets, so I can't really speak to like how it would work for a pet mess, but um, in our house, I love it. I use it for our rugs. I use it for our, our carpet in our bedrooms and in the basement and for upholstery. And it has always done a great job. So I threw the cushion covers in the washer just on a really like delicate cycle. And then I wanted to get out the carpet cleaner and start using that on the rest of the couch that cannot be put in the washer. So I switch up my carpet cleaning solution pretty much every time that I do this, but I always use super, super hot water, the hottest I can get it. Sometimes I even boil water in like a tea kettle. Um, and then I typically will add some laundry detergent for like upholstery cleaning. In this case, I added this vinegar. I had, <laughs> I just Googled carpet um, or upholstery cleaning solution and a lot of things came up with vinegar. So I thought, why not? <laughs> so I added it. So you can kind of see here, 
we had gotten um, some hot Cheetos on the arm of, arm of this couch and I tried to clean it off with just a, re a regular washcloth and then it left this huge watermark. So you can kind of see it better here. So this was like the thing that made me think, okay, I really need to clean this couch. And of course the hot Cheeto marks as well. Um, we are actually very excited to be hosting Friendsgiving for Chloe's entire cheer squad, like her freshman squad and the JV squad and the varsity girls. So it's going to be a lot. There's a lot of girls coming, but we are super excited. We, um, we didn't really have a house in Florida that we felt like we could host a lot of people in just because it, the size wasn't um, really conducive to having like tons of people and we didn't have multiple places to sit really. Um, we loved our home and we loved Florida, don't get me wrong, but uh, we just were very excited to get back to where we can host people in our homes because for myself and for my husband, it is like one of our favorite things to do. Whether it's like a casual little get together with our neighbors on a Friday night or something more, you know, formal and planned out like this Friendsgiving, we just love it. So um, I wanted to get things prepared. I always like to get things prepared well in advance. Honestly, you never know what the week of is going to look like. And our Friendsgiving is next Wednesday. I'm currently filming this on a Friday, as I said earlier, but um, this was all done about, I don't know, three days ago. So about a week out from the party, um, that's when I started thinking about, okay, what are some things I can do right now that I can use my time wisely, knock some things off the list, but they're not going to be completely undone by the time that the party happens. <laughs> so obviously things like cleaning bathroom sinks, cleaning toilets, wiping counters, all of that's going to have to be done the day of, and it has to be done pretty much every day anyway. But things like upholstery cleaning, carpet cleaning, um, cleaning like the glass doors on the office, cleaning the glass doors that you can kind of see behind me or behind um, the couch here on the open shelving in the kitchen. All of those things are tasks that I don't do super regularly, um, kind of just on an as needed basis. But when I know I'm going to have a lot of people in my house that might be noticing things that I have just become used to, like dust on the glass and all of that. Um, I like to kind of like look at my home from a different point of view and think what are other people potentially going to notice. Now, <laughs> with this being said, I don't think a bunch of high school girls and even their parents and, and our coach, I don't think that they're coming to like judge my house and look and see if there's fingerprints on things, but it's just something that goes with the territory when I offer to host something. I just, it makes me feel more confident when I'm actually hosting the party to know that people are going to see a clean house. It's just me. Um, so speaking of a clean house, how disgusting is this water? It's so satisfying when you see how much dirt is pulled out of things, but then it also really makes you question, like, what kind of housekeeper am I? <laughs> because this water is filthy. Um, while I had this out, it was so it's so easy to attach and detach that um, upholstery attachment. So I just went ahead and pulled that out. I always clean that hose really well when I'm finished using it because if not, it's like holding on to all this dirty brown water. So I always like put it in the utility sink and then run water um, through it. So sorry if you guys are tired of watching me clean this couch. <laughs> as much as I uh, was exhausted and didn't want to clean this couch anymore, I had also saw on um, just a Google search when I was looking at perfect cleaning solutions that you could use a solution that included um, using rubbing alcohol and I never think to use rubbing alcohol or you know in my cleaning routine but it is a disinfectant and I thought well, you know what the couch is clean I've done the first step but now like let's just make sure it's really disinfected and clean especially since the boys had been sick with a cough I thought let's just like really sanitize this couch so I put in um, another solution of water and 
rubbing alcohol, I would say I probably used for this size of water reservoir, I probably put in like a quarter of a cup to maybe half a cup of the alcohol. And it did smell pretty strong of like a hospital smell. Um, but once it dried, the couch smelled great. The only like lingering smell was really just the Tide. I didn't smell any vinegar and I didn't smell any rubbing alcohol. So I'll definitely do this again. And I do think like the two step process of um, cleaning it that second time was uh, really good to like kind of pull the extra soap residue out of it. host a big party without your leaf in your table and I love actually putting my leaf in I think I'm just going to leave it in we're a family of six and we could use the extra space honestly um I do need to maybe order a couple more chairs because the side with just the two chairs feels a little empty but um we, with you know any luck we'll be hosting more family in the winter I think my husband's going to try to come in January. Um, I know that some of you guys have watched my video where I talked about my mom being sick. Um, she had breast cancer and she actually, we're still waiting on all of the results, but she did finish her chemo um, treatments and she did have um, surgery to remove the rest of the cancer. And we are just waiting back, um, waiting to hear back from pathology to see if they were able to get everything, uh, she does have to do radiation and that will start in December, right around her birthday. So not the most exciting thing to do um, on your birthday, but she's really happy to be hopefully nearing the end of this um, terrible, terrible journey that she's been on. And I mean, we're, we're all just ready for her to be well. Um, so. To those of you who who did see that video and who reached out and commented like thank you so much because it really means a lot to me that to know that you guys are pulling for her and thinking of our family um but like i was saying we are hopeful that they can come and visit in january they were here in may and it was right before mother's day actually it was she was here on mother's day and um it was wonderful but there was kind of a dark cloud over the trip because we were waiting to hear back at that point um, on whether or not what the lump was that she had was um, cancerous and it, it turned out to be. But at that time we were unsure and we were just kind of on edge. So I really hope that they are able to come in January and like fully enjoy the trip and the visit. And yeah, I can't wait. Um, <clears throat> so. I was cleaning um, to segue back into what I'm doing here. This cleaner that I was using was like the Orange Glow. It's very, very uh, slick, so I don't really use it on the bench portion because I feel like my kids are just gonna slide right off. But um, it really does help like to take uh, the table from being really dull to like super shiny. I don't use it every time I clean the table. Typically, I just use like Thieves Cleaner. Um, get ready for really, really gross. Uh, pour of all of this nastiness that came out of the rug. to go from such a disgusting scene there of that water in the sink to food but here we are this is real life I was cleaning a little bit and then I thought oh yeah I want to make some bone broth so I've talked about this multiple times on this channel and um, even last week I posted a Costco haul I always 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 get a chicken from Costco or really any grocery store that we go to always grab a rotisserie chicken the ones at Costco are $4.99. They are absolutely huge. Um, and 
they work well for the bone broth that I make, but any rotisserie chicken will do. So <clears throat> what I do is I start this early in the morning because it does need to cook for several hours to actually get the nutrients from, um, and like the collagen from the bones of the chicken. But I will <clears throat> take the breast off the chicken and just kind of dice this up. We will use this later on in a ramen recipe that I'm gonna share with you. So I take the chicken off. Sometimes our kids will like snack on it and stuff. I put the entire chicken along with like all of the juices that were left in the dish from Costco or wherever you buy it. Dump that into a huge stock pot. I add a whole onion. I do not take off the skins because there are nutrients in the skin of the onion and you're going to filter all that stuff out anyway. Then I add a huge spoonful of garlic and lots of lemon juice. You can of course use real lemons and just cut them up. Um, I had this lemon juice because I found it at Costco and I have a lot of it to use up as you know that goes when you buy things in bulk. Then I just fill it up. The more water you add, um, obviously the less sort of like potent the bone broth will be, but you can counteract that by just cooking it for longer. So at this point, I wanted to continue cooking um, this. What I'm doing now is about six hours after what you just saw when I put it on the stove. So this had been simmering for several hours and I wanted to make myself this homemade ramen that I make, I'm telling you, at least twice a week we eat this. <laughs> it's so good. So instead of dumping the whole thing, typically I would filter this all over like a bigger pot and then from there put it in mason jars, but this time it was just sort of like a single serve. So I moved the broth into a smaller pot. I'm using just a regular 10 cent packet of ramen, but I'm gonna discard the seasoning packet that came with it. I put the noodles into the broth, let them you know, just cook for maybe three minutes until they are soft. And then I add some chicken, just however much you want. I'm not a huge fan of um, chicken or just really meat in general. So I just add a little bit for my husband. I'll typically add more. The boys like more chicken. And then this is where it goes from like bland and okay-ish to amazing. So, my husband really loves the ramen. He picked out these bowls and ordered them. We got some chopsticks and some ramen spoons. But anyway, I was fixing Foster's chopstick too because they all like to use chopsticks when we eat ramen. And I had made him a little bowl as well for the kids. They just kind of eat it that way. And um, for for me and for Brian, we put this um, chili sauce, which can be found in any grocery store, typically like in the Asian section. I use a very small amount probably quarter of a teaspoon. Brian will put like a heaping spoon and his is so spicy that I can't even eat it. We like hoisin sauce. Um, it's not the healthiest thing. There's lots of sugar in it. So just a little bit of that and then soy sauce. And this is just such a good warming, like hearty, easy thing. I mean, easy in that it doesn't take long once you actually have the broth, but the broth makes it. That seasoning packet, I'm sorry, it's kind of gross. <laughs> so I don't use that. And I know that the noodles probably aren't the healthiest thing to eat. And there are healthier options we have bought before. But at that, when I made that, we just didn't have it. So I use the packets. Um, anyway, everyone loves it and we have it a couple times a week. So this is the next day. We had had an issue with spilling some um, Epsom salts behind the bathtub and this area behind the bathtub is so hard to clean anyway because it's just like awkward. So I vacuumed that up and then I wanted to mop the floors.
So while I had the mop out, I just thought I'll go ahead and I actually had put on a fresh mop head because I did clean in our water closet too. So when I clean around a toilet, then I that's like the last thing I do and then I'll just take off the mop head and pop a new one on. But got a fresh mop head, got a fresh bucket of water and I went downstairs to do the downstairs um, bathroom. All right, now this is yet another day. This was the next day and I was like, I'm getting some trees out. <laughs> I'm ready. I had cleaned enough. It was time to get the trees and this tree, I'm so happy I bought these. I actually bought three of them and I saw it on um, Aubrey Swan's Instagram over the summer, like in July. She posts tons of deals and she had posted that these trees on Walmart's website, they're six foot flocked trees. Um, they are not pre-lit, but like I'm honestly fine with that these were only eight dollars so i ordered three i wish i would have ordered more because the girls decided they wanted these in their bedrooms instead of the little pencil trees that they used to have um so i kept the pencil trees maybe they'll want to use those again in the future but the flocked ones are so pretty and honestly i want to get one for our living room especially now that we have taller ceilings last year we bought a nine foot tree and um it's pretty and you'll see it in a few minutes i'm gonna go in the living room and kind of mess with that too but i think we need a 12 foot tree so maybe after the season is over we'll find a really good deal on one um okay so i had to like majorly fluff this tree up because it had obviously been in a box this was the first time i had ever opened it so i went through branch by branch and just fluffed it up i kind of tried to think of it as like each branch being sort of like a star and having each branch on each limb go every direction so like one going you know a few going high a few going low and like fanning them out and just making it as full as i could possibly get it Moving on to the living room, I changed my screensaver on our uh, Frame TV. I have uh, been begging my husband to move this TV down. This is like the story of our life. Every time that we move, which is pretty often, we hang our TV and we always end up with it too high. And even this time, I told him where to hang it. and it still ended up too high. I just am not a very good gauge. I guess I should be one of those people that gets out the masking tape and like frames it out ahead of time, but I'm not. And it just bothers me. I don't like the gap between the TV and the mantle. I also don't like, and maybe I'm just being really particular here. I don't like how the bottom of the TV <laughs> is like in line with that line of shiplap. Anyway, he promised me he's going to move it down. So hopefully that'll happen this weekend. So a minute ago, you, you saw me showing the boys. I was actually talking to all four of the kids and telling them don't pull on these stockings because these stocking holders are very heavy and they are made of metal and they will fall on your head. And I ended up, I'm so paranoid about this that I ended up getting some command strips and I didn't film this part, but I took them back up and then I like put command strips underneath of them so they're pretty stuck down. But after I put the command strip down, there was a little blooper and I pulled on the stockings like really hard to see if they would come off, like just to test and see if the kids could pull them down. And I, instead of pulling the stocking holder off the mantle, I ripped the actual stocking. So that was me trying to fix the stocking with a safety pin. Um, Anyway, adding this garland, I might buy another garland, I don't know. We'll see what it looks like when we move the TV down. And I just kind of like moving things, trying to decide where to put the stuff that came off of the mantle. It's actually going to end up just going in the basement and it's going to just be more like my spring summer decor because I don't have room to put these little black faces anywhere else and they don't have to be out year round. So as I'm like walking away and coming back, I noticed that our stockings kind of looked like they said barf, <laughs> which if 
you know me, you know I can't handle barf. So I ended up taking the dog. It doesn't say barf because it says B-A-C-R-G-F, but you couldn't really see the C and then the G broke. So I'm like, um, I think I'll just take these off. I didn't want them to be out of order because I just, I wanted it to be in order of like dad, mom, you know, and then age order. So I just took those off and I ended up giving them to the kids to put in their bedrooms on their trees. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, the leaves are so unchanging. Oh Christmas tree, I didn't film this. I was doing it on a Sunday and I just didn't have my camera out, but here's a little sneak peek of what I did in the messy kitchen. So I just put out my grandma's china that has um, the Christmas holly leaves and Christmas trees on it. A few random little trees that I already had from the dollar spot and I love it. I, it makes me smile every time I walk in there. So um, I ended up running out to Hobby Lobby. I have always wanted to do one of those types of tree toppers where it's just kind of like the sprigs and they're kind of like spraying out from the top of the tree. I love that look. I've just never done it. I've always tried to just do a regular tree topper and never been super happy with it. I feel like the tree topper is always sort of like leaning over to one side or I had had a bow up here which you just saw me take down and like throw on the ground and I also want to say I was up really high here. I was standing on one of our bar stools and I was kind of scared but um, it's okay. There were no injuries in the making of this tree topper. So I bought these sprigs from Hobby Lobby. Their um, Christmas stuff is 60% off right now so they were very inexpensive. Some of them were like 60 cents and um, I ended up just kind of like sticking them in everywhere and I love the finished product. guys we are nearing the end of this video so the last thing that I wanted to do was get the boys Christmas tree put up in their bedroom I apologize for the lighting in here it's just not a very bright bedroom so it's really hard to film in here because it's hard to get the lighting but you can see I'm sure well enough to know what I'm doing and to realize that this Christmas tree was busted so I love the tree I love the pencil um, the pencil tree and I love like the way the branches look but the pre-lit portion was broken and I decided I was going to just take off the lights that were already on there. I thought it would be way easier than it turned out to be, 
but I thought, okay, I'll just take these off. I did try to like wiggle the lights and stuff. And after the fact, my husband told me I could have fixed that. And I'm like, well, too late. I already cut it all off, but um, here's Foster. He's gonna show you his soccer ball uh, ornament. <laughs> It's still actually the only ornament that we've hung because I've been doing other trees, but here is me attempting to get these lights off and man, they are wrapped on there really well. But I ended up getting the, them cut off of the tree, at least this section. I haven't finished the other sections yet. And um, I put on like the multicolored lights because the boys really loved that idea. Instead of having the white, they've got like the rainbow in their room. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the video. I've got a lot more decorating that I still want to do. I'd love to put up a tree in our basement because it's like our family room area. I just haven't got around to it yet. And I still need to decorate the one that I put up in the office. Um, thank you again. I know I tell you guys this every time, but I truly love you. I love you for being here. I hope that today is fantastic for you. And I hope that you'll come back again next week. Bye.